Now at 10, a Jones County murder suspect remains behind bars after a judge denied her bond. Details on her initial appearance in court after the deadly Friday shooting straight ahead. And we're tracking some showers across the Pine Belt right now. I'll give you all the details of what you need to know for the rest of the evening coming up. And later, a Hub City Music Festival drums up support for musicians in need. How the first annual Nico Palooza builds up the Pine Belt artist. Your News at 10 starts right now. Tonight, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM 7 News at 10. Welcome in, I'm Kyra Lampley. We've been on your side following a deadly shooting in Jones County on Friday morning. Today, Cynthia Barnett was charged with first degree murder and denied bun. Our Emily Blackmar has the details on her initial appearance in court. The Jones County Sheriff's Department arrested 51 year old Cynthia Barnett for the deadly shooting of 54 year old Wilson Earl Myrick. Captain Vince Williams says it first appeared as a whodunit situation before they established it as a homicide. We began developing suspects, uh, people that he was last seen with or last known to be seen um, with. We began interviewing different individuals and we came in contact with two. We ended up detaining them for investigation purposes after we established probable cause. According to law enforcement, physical and circumstantial evidence was gathered. District Attorney Brad Thompson says a confession was collected as well leading to Barnett's first degree murder charge and bond denial. I think it's appropriate uh, for this nature of this crime. Uh, Just horrific, very tragic. And we're, we're very satisfied that he denied bond and we'll proceed from there. There's still a lot of work to do for the investigators and then ultimately we'll present it to a grand jury at some point. At the close of her appearance, Barnett spoke with the judge, asking for time to say goodbye to her family and permission to attend a doctor's appointment. The judge denied her request. Really don't have a comment because I don't know any. I don't have any reason to not believe what she was saying about some health issues. However, um, that's part of what the jail provides. We have a nurse there. They'll provide her health needs while she's incarcerated. We can take care of that. Reporting in Jones County, Emily Blackmore, WDAM 7, on your side. And if found guilty, District Attorney Brad Thompson says the lowest sentence for a first degree murder charge is life in prison. And new information in the Natchez officer involved shooting we told you about at five. The Mississippi Bureau of Investigation initially said one person was injured, but we've since learned from Adams County officials that one person is dead as well. Authorities say Georgia Chapman flagged down a deputy on old US Highway 84 around 10 a.m. this morning. Chapman told the deputy deputy that she had been kidnapped and assaulted by her own again off again boyfriend Sherrod Bell. Later, Bell allegedly grabbed a handgun and started shooting at Chapman while she was standing next to deputies. Chapman was shot in the stomach and is expected to be OK. And Bell was shot and killed by deputies. And these are developing stories in our community and state. You can stay updated on them by downloading the WDAM 7 news app. It's free for Apple and Android devices. And turning now to weather, Hannah, it's been a stormy few hours here in the Pine Belt. Are skies going to clear up anytime soon? Yeah, Kyra, after this round of showers and thunderstorms moves through, we're going to be pretty quiet for the rest of the evening. So we only have a little bit more to deal with before it's all over for the night. Fortunately, all the storms have died down. We're just dealing with a little bit of rain across the Pine Belt as these as this system moves through. We were seeing a lot of lightning earlier and a lot of heavy rain. But since then, you notice on Southern Pine Electric Radar, we are all in the green. A few areas just getting a little bit of some isolated heavier rain showers. You notice down here in southern portions of of the Pine Belt. But other than that, we are sitting mostly clear across the area, though we do have one flash flood warning in Clark County. Now this flash flood warning is not from the heavy rain. It is in Archusa Creek. It is from a dam break failure and the concerns are flash flooding downstream. Now if you are in a low lying area below Archusa Creek, move to a higher ground if you are able because concerns from this flash flood warning will last until 315 tomorrow morning. Currently across the area, you notice how these storms have died down as they move through. Again, we're just dealing with a little bit of right lane, light rain across the area. And as we go throughout the rest of the evening, temperatures are going to dip down into the mid to low 70s across the area. Though the rain is expected to last just a couple more hours into the early hours of tomorrow morning. I'll give you all the details on tomorrow coming up later in the show. 
And looking around the Pine Belt now, today dozens of local musicians performed at Brewski's in Hattiesburg for the first annual Nico Palooza. The fundraiser was put together by Nico's Music Mission, an organization honoring late drummer Nico Everett, who passed away last July. The organization assists local artists in need, something Everett's family and friends say was the essence of his personality. We had a celebration of life here for him at Brewski's, and we, we just saw the amount of people that came together. I've never seen that many local artists on one stage, mm -hmm. it, and it just touches. We're like, we, we've got to build off of this. We've got to do something. got to keep his name going because he meant so much to everybody. And Everett's parents say he was always looking for ways to uplift and support others, which is what they hope to continue to do through the organization. And the state of Mississippi now has a new Miss Hospitality. Ole Miss sophomore and Wayne County native Abney Grace Pittman was crowned last night at the Sanger Theater in Hattiesburg. Pittman says all 41 contestants played a role in making the experience a humbling and memorable one. We all leaned on each other and we all lifted each other up this week and I truly could not have done this without the other 40 amazing girls that are on the stage with me. And runner-ups included contestants from Petal, Hattiesburg, Ponotoc, and Madison counties, respectively. Pittman is currently pursuing a degree in, in communication sciences and disorders and plans to attend graduate school for speech and language pathology. And the Distinguished Young Women of Mississippi program concluded last night at the Evangel Temple in Meridian. And its winner already has her sight set on the future. Sadie Perkins of Lamar County was named the DYW of Mississippi for 2024. Perkins says one of the things she looks forward to as the new DYW of Mississippi is investing in the next class of participants. I'm excited to come back and invest in them and really teach Be Your Best Self because that's something I live by daily. My dad always tells me don't be good, be great, and Be Your Best Self is just that. Be great, strive for greatness, and I'm just excited to invest in these girls. And Sadie will represent the state program in the national competition next June in Mobile. And looking ahead now, Laurel's biggest festival is just around the corner and Laurel Main Street is already preparing for the big day. Lob Lolly brings the community of Laurel together for a fun field day with vendors, kids activities, live music and so much more. The big day is October 7th, but vendor spots are open now and they're going fast. So if you're interested, applications can be found at laurelmainstreet.com. And if you're looking to give back to your community, consider giving blood. Tomorrow kicks off WDAM 7 and Vitalant's annual Blood Bowl. Throughout the next week, we'll be live from the various donation spots across the Pine Belt with a look at the dire need for blood. And we'll be tallying up which city donates the most. Wiggins is up first with the blood drive tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Stone County Library. And Hattiesburg is hot on his heels, collecting donations from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m at Miss Kelly Furniture. All the information you need is on your screen right now. So mark your calendars and donate blood. And check this out. If you were driving in pedal this evening, you may have seen what caused one of the more unique animal control calls the Pine Belt will ever have. The Forest County Sheriff's Office responded to a call of a camel walking along the fence on Evelyn Gandy Parkway. The camel named Clyde is part of the McMurray farmland. When Deputy Jared Hagen and Lieutenant Troy Russell arrived, Hagen said Clyde seemed very interested in his hat. No one was injured and and the officers led Clyde back to safety. Well, coming up for you at 10, a frantic search for a missing Alabama woman has finally come to an end. How the woman was found and how she's recovering. Plus, a family dog lands an escaped Pennsylvania inmate back behind bars. How a week-long manhunt came to a close after the break.